Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of NEC on the Run. I'm Kyle Turner with NEC Front Row here talking men's basketball with the NEC Hoops guru Ron Ratner. Ron, thanks for joining me today. All right, Kyle, we've hit the halfway point, so things are starting to heat up, so uh, let's get going. All right, we're going to jump into the NEC headlines. First headline, Ron, how about those Terriers? Yes, it was St. Francis, Brooklyn, who emerged from a very crowded pack of teams to take over first place after a pair of wins last week. Terriers beat uh, the Mount. Great game, overtime game, two real good teams, uh, 73-67 on Thursday. Then, in the annual Battle of Brooklyn, uh, St. Francis, Brooklyn, knocked off their neighborhood rivals, LIU Brooklyn, 81-64. Now, Kyle, this marks the first time since 2003-04 that St. Francis, Brooklyn has been all alone in first place after 10 games of league play. 8-2, uh, eight and two, also back in 03-04. That year, they uh, finished tied for the regular season title. Uh, for St. Francis, Brooklyn, they have plenty of company at the top. They're, they're only ahead by a game. You have Robert Morris and Bryant tied for second place with seven and three records, and then at six and four, there's a whole, three teams: Mount, St. Francis, U, and Wagner. So uh, plenty of contenders, but as of this point, St. Francis Brooklyn is number one. And the cool thing about it is that the New York media is starting to pick up on what St. Francis is doing. Uh, they have articles last week in both the New York Post and the New York uh, Daily News. New York Times is working on an article. St. Francis, as a trivia note, is one of five teams in the country that is yet to appear, Division One teams that have yet to appear in the NCAA tournament. Could this be the year for St. Francis Brooklyn? Long way to go, but we'll see. Now the Terriers are definitely turning heads in, in conference play, but the Seahawks, they're soaring. Yeah, you're not kidding. They, they've won four of their la last five games, and you, you ask, why, why is that special? Why, Wagner's been good the last few years. They finished second place in the NEC in each of the last three seasons. I'll tell you why, because Almost all those players, they're gone. They're not here anymore. So uh, five freshmen, seven newcomers on the roster. And it's not like these guys are not getting run here. They're contributing, and they're key contributors, because after Marcus Burton, who's a senior, the big scorer, the next five leading scorers are three freshmen and two newcomers. So obviously Burton, Marcus Burton's the guy, he's the straw that stirs the drink for Wagner. He's averaging almost 23 points per game in league play. That's six points higher than anyone else in the conference. Scored his thousand point against uh, Central Connecticut the other night, and uh, he's the NEC's overall leading scorer at 18.6 a game. So, so yes, Kyle, the Wagner is soaring. I'll have more on another critical Wagner piece, another player, later on in the show. All right, Ron, you mentioned that Marcus Burton is the, the straw that stirs the drink for Wagner. But let's talk about a key player on St. Francis Brooklyn. How about Jalen Cannon? Well, they got a couple. They may have two or three players that stir the drink over there at St. Francis. But Jalen Cannon, absolutely. Senior forward. Uh, wanted to point out his milestone over the weekend. He's going to have, I have a feeling next week or the week after, we're going to have an even bigger milestone. But uh, he was only the fourth player in NEC history to reach 1,000 rebounds. He did that last Thursday against the Mount. He's now third all-time, 1,015 rebounds. He's about to pass Central Connecticut's Ron Robinson for second place, who's a heck of a player. And then 18 more uh, to supplant Quinnipiac's Justin Ruddy as the all-time NEC rebound king. Um, great stuff from Jalen Cannon. He's also six points shy of reaching 1,500 points. Become the second 1,500 point, 1,000 rebound player in NEC history. Again, joining Ruddy. So Cannon's having an, uh, he's having an amazing year. And uh, his play last week, 18 and a half points, 11 and a half rebounds, doing what he does every week, has, as we said, has the Terriers in first place. Well, that's definitely an impressive stat for Jalen Cannon. And speaking of stats, let's look at NEC numbers. What do you got for me this week? All right, I'm not done with Jalen Ken. If we haven't spoken enough, I got one more this week. And also, I have Phil Gaetano on Sacred Heart. So, did, did some research amongst the NCAA active career leaders in different categories. Jalen Cannon, obviously, was going to be one of the top in the nation, one of the tops in the nation with over 1,000 career rebounds. Turns out he is number one amongst all players in Division One right now. 1,015 rebounds is one more than UC Santa Barbara's uh, Allen Williams. Interestingly, the guy who's in third, Usman Drame, was a player at Quinnipiac, played in the NEC for two seasons. He's three short of 1,000 for his career. Uh, Gaetano has 669 career assists. That's fourth in the country behind LaTex Kenneth Smith, Florida Gulf Coast Brett Comer. That's, he's a, that guy can play. And San Diego's Christopher Anderson. So 
Uh, hats off to these two guys who are ending their careers, you know, ranked amongst some of the great players in the country in what they do best. Definitely great players for the NEC. Now, Ron, spotlight performance. Who is it this week? This was hard this week. This was a hard one. Uh, I'm going to go with Dan Garvin, my number one spot, Dan Garvin O'Brien, sophomore forward. That was a big win they had at Robert Morris on on Saturday. The, uh, the, the Bulldogs had lost to St. Francis U, competitive game. I was out there on Thursday. They go into Robert Morris, who is red hot, win by three points. Here's Garvin's numbers for the game. Hit nine out of 10 shots from the field, finished with 21 points and seven rebounds. He also had a huge dunk with over a minute and a half, a little over a minute and a half left to play that helped uh, give them the cushion they need to win the game. All right, so same game. I'm going to the other side of the court, Marquise Reed, now a five-time NEC Rookie of the Week. Uh, he scored 11 straight points in a little over two minutes near the end of that game. And as the, you know, the Colonials almost came from, from way down to win that game in the final moment. So uh, hats off to Marquise Reed. All right, Kyle, you know that I always like to pick an under-the-radar honorable mention. Somebody whose numbers maybe don't jump off the, the sheet as much, but still, they're big. This week, I'm going with Mike Amon of Wagner. We all know about Marcus Burton and his back-to-back -back NEC Player of the Weeks and his big numbers, but Mike Amon, he's a URI transfer. He's a Staten Island native. He missed nine straight games with an injury. He hadn't even played in an NEC game all season long. Finally, makes his debut in conference play on Thursday. Two games averaged 11 points, 11 rebounds, and he did it without even playing 20 minutes per game. So now, for Bashir Mason, he's got a rugged 6'7 body, whether to start or come off the bench, and just get in the paint and do some work. He could be a double-double machine for Wagner going down the stretch as they make their final push. Well, hopefully he helps out Wagner, and hopefully he stays healthy. Now, Ron, Twitter timeout. What do you got? All right, I got a, a couple today. I'm going to start with Jamal Womack. Jamal Womack was a player for uh, St. Francis, Brooklyn, back about five, six years ago. Real good player, averaged, uh, scored over 1,000 career points. Good shooter. So he's now an assistant coach with the Terriers. Um, and he commented on the Battle of Brooklyn. In his tweet, if you haven't played in this game, it's tough to get. When your rival is literally down the block for you, it's real. LOL. Hashtag Battle of Brooklyn. You know, as someone who has been, myself, has been to nearly every Battle of Brooklyn game since I started here in the 90s, it's always great. It's always an experience. And for me, I love that Brent Jones, of all players, Brent Jones, a Brooklyn native, was named the MVP of this year's Battle of Brooklyn. All right, for the second Twitter timeout, if I'm going to pick a tweet, I might as well pick my own, right? Come on. Uh, I'm going to go with, I was out in Loretto last week, and I saw this actually happen. Earl Brown's having a fantastic year. Happened to be his birthday on Thursday. So, as I wrote, Flash fan serenading SFU Athletics Earl Brown with some happy birthday love. He's liking it, but trying not to show it. So Earl Brown had a big game. Uh, the fans were into it. The student section was into it. And a big win over Bryant. And I really like this quote that Earl, Earl Brown had last week because they lost three in a row to Flash. He said, people face adversity every day. It's just how you bounce back. And that's what they did last week. And Earl Brown, 18 and a half points, eight and a half rebounds, hit two thirds of his shots and wins over Bryant and FDU. Red Flash, back on their winning ways again. All right, it's definitely always important to get that win to get off that skid. Now, Ron, let's look at the TV matchups this week. All right, we got two of them. Doubleheader Thursday here for NEC TV. Here's the one I'm looking, really looking forward to. I'm going to be up at Bryant. Uh, Bryant hosts the Mount, Battle of NEC Contenders. And. When the student section is in session at Bryant, boy, is that, that's an atmosphere. I was there last year, and it was so much fun. So I'm looking forward to a packed Chase Center, 7 o'clock. It's a national game on ESPNU, so that should be a good one. When that ends, everybody switch over to MSG and Fox College Sports. We'll have FDU, and as we just spoke about, St. Francis U at 9 o'clock. Special treat that game, along with our crew of announcers, Dave Calloway, former Monmouth coach. He'll be sitting in. We'll go with a four-man booth in that game. Looking forward to it. Oh, wow. That's, a, that's an exciting lineup, especially with that ESPNU game. Now, fans, here's the schedule for the men's basketball games in the next week. Keep in mind, a lot of these games, most of these games, can be seen on NEC Front Row free of charge. Also, iOS users, don't forget to download the NEC On The Run app on your iPad and or iPhone.
That's all we have for this edition of NEC On The Run. I'm Kyle Turner for NEC Front Row. I want to thank Ron Ratner for being with me today, and we'll see you next week.